In past videos, we printed, built, wired, tested, and operated this weeder, and we used the default image classification model and all that. This is the video that has the most application outside of this weeder. In it, we're going to create a custom image classification model that runs on a Raspberry Pi. I initially tried to use an off-the-shelf generic image classifier to look at these various plants that I'm interested in, but it failed miserably, and I get why. We are really close up looking at plants from six inches away, and they're often baby plants. And that's not how the uh, generic models are meant to work. So a custom classifier gets us way better results. And now this is simple to do. Uh, you could use it in a robot that you know does other things. It could identify animals or plants with diseases or textiles when viewed up close. Uh, the possibilities are myriad. You're basically taking an image classification model that knows how to look at images, can find differences, contrasts, colors, etc., and uh, categorize those images. And you're saying, hey, forget all the old categories that you knew. I'm going to give you some new categories and a few hundred image examples in each category. You can learn from those, and then you can go out and classify what I want you to do. There's three steps for this. First, we got to obtain a bunch of uh, training images, and we want them to be specific training images. Uh, we want them to give our model a leg up in the world. Um, and th there's two advantages here. One, we want to have those uh, training images look exactly like what the weeder will actually see when it's out and running in the wild. Um, so you're going to obtain those, you know, actually using the weeder and then download those to your laptop. The second advantage we want to give this is uh, we're going to break those photos into 224 by 224 pixel size because that's what our model wants. Uh, our model likes seeing images of that size and we'll give it the exact resolution that it's going to uh, analyze when it's actually out there running. We'll do the same thing, you know, break the images up into small grids like that. So that's the first thing. Obtain a bunch of training images that are just like what we want them to be. The second step is classify those images, and this is tedious. I get it. You're going to have to have a few hundred examples of each type of plant for the image classifier to learn enough to perform well. If you can get a thousand images, you're doing even better. But we have to classify those by hand. We can automate it, but it's boring. I get it. Um, when you're done, you're going to have uh, categorized images in folders and a few hundred examples of each uh, image, uh, each, each plant type, and that's called your training set. Um, so then third, we're going to take that training set, we're going to go to Google Media Pipe Model Maker, it's a website, um, and they give you access essentially to a Linux machine with a GPU attached for free. We're going to upload those uh, images there, and they've already written the script to retrain an image classifier for us. So we're just going to hit play basically on the script that they've written on that website. And at the end of it all, you're going to have a TensorFlow Lite uh, uh, image classifier. Now, a TensorFlow Lite means um, it, it's not as good as maybe the, the image classifiers that are out there, but it runs on a Raspberry Pi. It's actually going to be quantized to an 8-bit integer value, and it does good enough for our purposes. Then you're going to take that, and you're going to push it out onto your Raspberry Pi, which is running your weeder, and it will pick up that new image classifier model and be able to identify the weeds in your garden. Let's dive in. Connect to the uh, Weeder Wi-Fi and go out to weeder.local slash run. Uh, what we will first want to do is take pictures of plants on the ground that look just like they will when the Weeder is actually running. So uh, in order to do that, the first thing you do is you know put your Weeder somewhere that's going to uh, drive forward and look at representative plants. So in your garden or orchard or lawn, whatever, whatever you happen to have, uh, where there are weeds, you know, examples of the weed that you want to look at. And the first thing that you're going to do is run this orient to sun routine. You actually want the lens to be facing the sun just like it will be when it runs. So click that, hit submit. Then you're going to want to go up to uh, normal run here, or sorry, uh, capture photos to be built. Um, and this is going to just take photos and drop them out in our log directory. So you can tell at whatever distance you want, whatever makes sense. Uh, again, you know, if you've got a hundred foot long row and there's a whole bunch of stuff in it, do a hundred feet here. If it's only five, do five. Um, and you can turn around if you need to. So go ahead and hit capture photos to build model and the weeder will just start driving forward. It'll pause and then drive forward pause and then drive forward and what it's doing every time it pauses is taking a photo and those photos are showing up out in your weeder.local which is the log directory so here's what that looks like uh, we're out in um, weeder.local we're going to refresh this 
Now we pop down to the very bottom. This is the one that was just taken. And what you see here are a bunch of photos, uh, JPEGs, with the word model in them. That tells you that these were taken as part of your model building process. Uh, so whenever you go over to your Weeder Local and run the uh, capture photos to build model, you're going to see those show up like this. Um, now you have two ways that you can get access to these things. The first is just go to this folder right here where they were taken and right click each one of them and save link as. You can save each one of these uh, to your hard drive. The other way is a program like WinSCP or SCP. Um, so if you have a Mac or a Linux, SCP, secure copy, is a command and you can do um, a, a remote connection. So you would uh, tell it to go to you know your username at weeder.local slash wherever that thing resides, wherever that directory resides, and you copy everything over. Um, if you don't have access to that, you're going to have to use, if you're Windows, that is, you're going to have to use WinSCP. And so all you have to do is connect to the thing just like you did over SSH, username and password. Um, it is now uh, weeder.local that you're connecting to. And you want to go out here to the log directory, and you can see here in the log directory, uh, you've got all of those logs. And so in the very last one down here, um, oh, that's the wrong name. It'd be this one here, sorry, the very first one, top one. You've got all of those same um, files that show up in the browser over here. And you can just grab all of them and copy them somewhere. The left side of this panel here is your actual laptop where you're running from. You can copy all those things over. So now you have um, accomplished the first thing, which is we're going to take a bunch of photos that are just like what our, uh, what our uh, weeder will see when it's actually running. Now we also want to make our model happy and break these photos into 224 by 224 pixels. So in order to make these uh, images the right size and to classify them, we're going to automate this somewhat. Um, we have this program, Divide Image Sort. Uh, it's already out in the GitHub. You can grab it from the GitHub. What this essentially does is it breaks our images into 224 by 224. That's the crop size that you see here. And then with a single keystroke, uh, a letter, it will drop the picture, the, the smaller piece of the grid, into whatever directory you just told it to drop it into. So um, what you're going to start with is those large images. If I hit Run here, this thing is going to run and you see it shows me the whole image here and then it shows me the very first piece of the grid. So a 224 by 224 piece of this image is right here and it's going to show me this and it's waiting for me to give it a keystroke. So if I give it a keystroke of, uh, you know, this looks like grass to me, so I'll say G. Uh, I, I, it's way faster if you just have a single keystroke to, to classify these things. Um, it'll actually drop this big image back here, and then it'll show me the next piece of the image, which is going to be over here. It'll probably have a little bit of dandelion in it. This, this looks like a dandelion leaf to me. So I'm going to hit um, G for grass. And then, like I said, uh, that big image disappeared, and now you see the next image. This looks like a dandelion, so I'm going to hit the letter D. And what it's actually doing out here, if I pull up the directory structure, um, in, it's dropping these things into the sorted v2 directory here. And um, each one of these directories has a single letter, and it's one of those letters that I'm pressing on the keyboard. Every time I uh, press a new letter, it creates a new directory. But what it's doing is, this is a really fast way for me to drop all of the dandelion photos into this directory right here. And what we're shooting for here is two things. Um, we want to make them 224 by 224 pixels. Our model likes that. And two, we need them to be manually sorted. We need a few hundred examples of dandelions close up, just like our weeder is going to see them, in a directory so that we can retrain a model later. So if you look at you know what's in this directory right here, this one right here is um, a picture of a, a dandelion pretty close up. And this one over here looks like it's just a little bit of uh, maybe some, some dandelion leaf. But every one of those things would be considered a dandelion, and our weeder would want to go zap that. So whatever you drop in here, uh, when you retrain your model, it's going to say, oh, OK, I know what that is. It's a dandelion, because I had a whole bunch of examples of what dandelions look like from you know six inches away. Um, and, and so that's what we're doing. The whole point of running this script, this, this sorted script, is just to make it faster. Um, you can clip through these things pretty fast. You know, You can say, that's a G, that's a dandelion, uh, that's grass, that's grass, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get a couple hundred examples in just a couple hours of every one of the categories that you want using this sorting script. What you're going to end up with at the end of all this is a directory like this one called sorted that just has a bunch of uh, you know, directories in it. Those are your um, 
what it can what your image model can classify so you could actually rename this from d to dandelion for example when you actually go to use it um, and that is what your um, when, when your image classifier does its job it's going to say oh yeah 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 this looks a lot like what i saw in that dandelion directory when i was trained i'm going to say that it's a dandelion with high confidence so when you're done with all this you're going to end up with a folder that looks like this and it's got a couple hundred examples just like mine does here of you know grass for example there's probably a thousand examples of grass in here um, so you're going to end up with something like that that's specific to whatever your weeder just took for images so if you've got pictures of morning glory or pigweed or whatever uh, you're going to have you know folders called pigweed or p for pigweed um, and you know maybe m for morning glory um, so you're gonna you're gonna come out of it with that and when you're done sorting you're gonna then create a uh, zip file and inside this zip file it is all of those same uh, directories but in order to upload this in our next step we do need this to be a zip file before I jump on I, I did skip over one step here uh, this is currently set up for my directory structure on my laptop don't use my laptop because yours isn't going to look like mine so you're going to have to change this path right here when you run this um, divide image and sort program it's whatever th this is wherever your um, large images that your weeder took are so the, the big images that you're going to start from and then there's uh, a couple more examples of paths down here if it th this should be where it's going to show up so this was my sorted v2 uh, this again is sorted v2 and this is sorted v2 so these are all three the same path uh, you need to change that to wherever your um, you want your sorted out files to show up so change this line and these three lines and then you can run this thing and at the end of all of it you'll come out with a, a zip file so if we pop over here to google colab all you got to do is uh, look for google colab media pipe customized image classification tf light the very first thing that comes up is uh, you know how to and this thing called media media pipe is the new google way of doing all of these models but this is just like uh, you know how do you actually run this thing so we're gonna i click on the run in collab button and here is the actual code that will make a new uh a, a, a customized image classification file for you so all you got to do is when you get to one of these things it just hit run so you hit the little play button here and it spits out just as if you were on this linux machine it spits out all the stuff that would happen if you actually executed those now i had a problem um, i had to use a keras version that was less than 3.0.0 it was actually failing because it was too new of a keras version but uh, this is what you get so you, you can add code um, you can say plus code at the bottom of this and just write whatever code you want i wrote pip install keras you know, less than three and for this media pipe model maker and then sure enough the next batch of code ran I was getting an error on this when it tried to get to this step right here where we try to import the image classifier and looking around that's what it was so um, you know here's the next thing I, I hit play on that it uh, imported all that stuff and then on this prepare data this is where we do all of our fancy work they assume that you're going to use a predefined flowers um, you know a bunch of photos of flowers but we have our own so what I did is I actually went over here on the left and I chose the file system and I chose to upload. I clicked on this little upload button here and um, I uploaded the sorted v2.zip. Now I uh, pasted in, I did a, a plus code here and I pasted in this stuff right here. So what it does is it installs an unzip package and then it actually unzips that package onto our file system. So if we go look in content under sorted v2, it actually, I got two directories whoops but in C G and L here these these are our JPEGs we've just uploaded those to this collab server and Google's gonna do a whole bunch of work for us and make us our model so the next thing you got to do is set the image path that would have been done in the previous step if you were following their directions but I had to do a plus code at the bottom of this um, and add that image path and then I had to remove some stuff uh, thumbs.db and some extra uh, folders were in there you only want jpegs so i created these two lines of code here and sure enough uh they they ran so um next you just click through this stuff hit that it shows that c g and l are the three classes that it knows about um i hit this but it doesn't do anything it, it would show you you know plots of your images 
Uh, this divides up all of your images into training data and um, uh, verification data. And then this down here, um, you're going to create your parameters and options. And this one down here, the run retraining, is the step that actually is going to do all of the retraining. And this is currently in progress. And it's running on a GPU. This will run in like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, this took like a day when I ran it on my laptop. So Google's got some nice GPUs that they're letting us use here. Uh, and what it's doing is it's taking, oh, one other thing, sorry. Got to jump up just a little. Uh, this was MobileNet. MobileNet V2. That's what I used last year when I did this. Uh, efficient net light is better at um, image classification in most cases. I'm not sure if it's a transform model or a, you know, a convolution model, but whatever. It doesn't matter. It's, it seems to work better. Uh, and there's some papers about you know how much better it is. So uh, change the words that are in this block right here to efficient net light, all caps, um, and then hit go on that. Now, this is the actual training step. It goes through, you know, 10 steps of this and it walks through each of them. It tries to minimize the loss function and blah, blah, blah. Um, when it's all done, all you have to do is jump down here and hit the model export and then the files downloaded. It'll actually download that thing to your uh, output. And then down here, uh, you can skip, 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 skip all the way down to here from media uh, pipe model maker import quantization. We are going to quantize this, which makes it run faster. Our poor little Raspberry Pi doesn't have a lot of horsepower. This will make it faster on our Raspberry Pi. So you'll click this, then the quantization config, and then you'll export that as a model int 8.tf light. That is the file name that actually comes out. And that tf light that has been quantized to an 8 bit integer is what we're going to use. Think of it like. Uh, I don't know, the difference between N64 and PlayStation 3. Like PlayStation 3 is the original model. It's it's pretty fine grain, works really well. This thing is a little chunkier, but it still works and it's easy for our Raspberry Pi to use. So this TF Lite is what we want, 8-bit uh, quantization. Take the int8 model uh, TF Lite that you just downloaded and push it out to your weeder. You can use SCP if you're on Linux or Mac or WinSCP if you're on Windows. And now you have to change one line of code that's out in the uh, weed killer script. So uh, this is a picture of it. It's the highlighted line. You can see that currently um, in that highlighted line, it's got dandelion, creeping Charlie leaf. Those are the things that were in my original model. You're going to want to edit those. So whatever uh, the folder names were in your model, those will be on the left side. So replace the D for dandelion with whatever the folder name was for your first type of weed. And then the dandelion, you know, the fully written out word there is the display name that's going to show up in the browser. So when you go to uh, weeder.local slash run, whatever pretty name you want to show up on the uh, website so that you can select it, you're going to put that there. So the left side uh, of each of those is going to be the folder name and the right side is going to be the pretty name that shows up on the website. Change that one line and when you restart your uh, weeder, you're going to go to the website weeder.local slash run and it will have your weeds on it and you can select from the new weeds that are part of your model and set your weeder loose.